about the better man for your life with house and home. Yeah, it's all about the better man for your life with house and home. Hello, and thank you for joining me on another House and Home show. I'm Theresa Miria. We have a great collection for you on this program and I can't wait to show you all that is set for you in the pipeline. We have Cooking with Goodman Filda, Shopping with Brian Bell for all your shopping tips, Ella Motos brings to all your attention its latest updates, Healthy Minds with the beautiful Dr. Ambi, Tina Pomat presents the BSB July's edition and finally we wrap up the show with Home Habits. To begin our show, here now is Cooking with Goodman Filda. Enjoy! Welcome back again to the show. What I'm going to do for you tonight, I'm going to do a bruschetta. Okay, the principle of bruschetta, you have any old bread in the house or something you don't use, what are you going to do? Like the same bread that I done for you last time on the last show on TV. Okay, I'm going to cut him. You cut him sideways. 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 We're going to do four bruschetta. Bruschetta come from Italy, not from France, but that's all right. You know, we're all friends in the European community, so we're all cooking together. Okay, I cut my bread, you see? Nice. So what I'm going to do, the bread will come later. Now what I'm going to do, all right, I'm going to cut the onion. Okay, I'm going to cut the onion. All right. I think half onion will be plenty. I put them on side. I'm going to get one capsicum. We wash him all get out of the top, we don't use him here. We wash him all seed blow up, no good kai kai. Okay, we cut him low up. And we cut him low up, and it's the same. You want to make it thin, thin little bit, so when you, when you eat it, we are not rabbits, it's not going to be stuck in our mouth, you know. We are educated people, we eat normally and properly, yeah. Because you know, I got that one. Now I got a tomato, very nice tomato. I cut the top, I don't want the top. I cut the side, and I'm going to do some lamen like this. You see? Coarse one, because you want him to be coarse. I put him on side, and I do the same for that one. Coarse one, coarse one. Okay, now, what I have up here, I got olive oil. You buy them in any shop in Papua New Guinea, they sell olive oil, okay? Very good. Don't use cooking oil or other oil. It's not going to be, it's going to be totally different. All right, so what I'm going to do, okay, I'm going to get my onion. I'm going to put them in there. I'm going to get my capsicum. I'm going to put them in there. And I'm going to put my tomato. And I'm going to put them in there. I'll make it the easy way for you people, so you know. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to blend them up. So all the oil will go all over the place. The olive oil is why we give a test with bruschetta. You can't, can't put cooking oil on butter. It's not a bruschetta anymore. Okay. So what I'm going to do, there we are. I got my things down there. Okay. I got my bread up here. I got my bread up here, my bread up here. And I put, I put the content on top, mix it up. Make sure you got a bit of everything on the side. Everything like that, okay. More like that. You put plenty, very nice. Okay? And you put some more up here. Some more down there. Some more down there. Now I'll get some black pepper. What I'm going to do, black pepper is good for you. Blacky, blacky, pepper, pepper, nice and nice. And there we are. That's your bruschetta. Now I got some feta cheese. You buy them in a shop, anywhere in a shop, feta cheese. So what I'm going to do with the feta cheese, I'm going to slice it a bit. One, two, three, four. All the time four. I'm going to slice it on the other side. One, two, three, four. Okay. 
And I'm going to put the feta cheese around. So I'm going to give him color, color. There we are. Feta cheese. Feta cheese. Feta cheese. Feta cheese. Color come. What I'm going to do now, I'm going to put them in the oven for about five, 10 minutes. A very hot oven. Just to seal it. I'll see you in a minute. I'll come back with a cook one. Bye. Hello. So I'm back from the back from the oven. As we are, the bouchette are the perfect. 10 minutes in the oven, 170. The bread is perfectly crispy. It's got good color. Everything is there. Tell me like him kissing one place speed up in noon. Look happy first thing, let's give some look like a guy. I'm gonna blow you plat. Easy to kiss him no vegetable, no garden, or capsicum, or tomato, or pepper. Cheesy got, cheese no got, I'm alright. I'm good black guy guy. And that's all. No can't throw him or get us something. Cook him, cook him good. Here we are. Bon appetit, mama uta, au revoir. Bye. Living a healthy life depends entirely on you and me. A healthy lifestyle and a hygienic environment keeps you alert and fit to move about actively and become even more productive. Cleanliness is very important and essential in life. Speaking of cleanliness, trying to choose a good cleaner can be practically and, yes, technically a bit of a stress. That is, at one point you find out that a certain cleaning product is just like the rest which leaves you somewhat unsatisfied. If you're someone who is in that category, then rest assured our good friends at Brian Bell have you covered for the best cleaning chemicals, tools and many more. Hi and welcome to Shopping with Brian Bell. I'm your host, Leon Gowie. In this segment, we'll have a look at our PNG made, eco-friendly cleaning products available here at Brian Bell. These are products you can use at home or in the office. So let's get started. So why is cleaning important? Imagine having no clean clothes and imagine having no clean cutlery, pots and pans to enjoy your next meal. What sort of germs are you growing? And what sort of new disease are you brewing with your lack of concern for cleaning your office space or your home? And what's the proactive approach that you can take to make your home or office clean? Well, look no further. Here at Brian Bell, we stock and sell a great range of quality PNG made chemicals, specifically Belltech chemicals that assist in cleaning. This is an array of different chemicals that help when it comes to cleaning. These chemicals include the following. Result, clean, degreaser and sanitizer concentrate. Ideal for cleaning all types of grime and grease. Multi-clean, multi-purpose detergent concentrate, heavy-duty cleaner for household domestic applications. Fantastic liquid laundry detergent, economical to use and leaves your laundry fresh and clean. As human beings, we've caused enough damage to planet Earth already with our pollution, our gas emissions and our waste chemicals in the ocean. Part of Brian Bell's corporate social responsibilities is the fact that we stock and sell eco-friendly products. These chemicals are made from natural extracts and have no negative effects on the environment. The first of our eco-friendly cleaning chemicals is the flyaway sanitizer and eco pesticide. This is organic cleaner, natural peppermint oil with insect deterring properties, can be used to clean tables around barbecue areas, shops and bars, spray and wipe cleaner, ideal to spray around outdoor settings before entertaining, the natural and environmentally friendly way to keep insects away, cleans both indoors and outdoors. 
This is ideal for cleaning your kitchen or your living room or your dining room. This has a nice fresh peppermint fragrance that leaves your home or office smelling fresh and clean. You and I both know that Papua New Guineans love staying outdoors, whether it's enjoying the cool afternoons or enjoying your cup of tea sessions with your family and friends. This product that we've shown is absolutely ideal to clean your surroundings so it's nice and clean for your family to enjoy and at the same time it's 100% eco-friendly. This is also a natural repellent keeping away those nasty insects like those flies, ants and mosquitoes. While we're on the topic of cleaning it's important to understand that cleanliness is part of a healthy lifestyle. Keeping clean minimizes the risk of preventable diseases and at the same time it increases your ability to perform during the day. A variety of products that we have available for you, our loyal customers, are the range of tools that are associated with our cleaning chemicals, particularly our eco-friendly cleaning chemicals. From rubbish bins in assorted sizes and colors, to mops, mop heads and mop sticks, cloths and wipes, and buckets and gloves. We have all the equipment you can need to help clean around your office and your home, so you can be healthy and productive in your day. Now, our next product to showcase is this Odogon All Natural Organic Odor Neutralizer. As the name suggests, this product helps to get rid of unwanted smells around your house. And in keeping with this segment's theme, this is also an eco-friendly product. Brian Bell's Odogon is an alternative to traditional air fresheners. Composed from botanic extracts, removes pet odor, damp, musty and bad odors of all kind. This can be used on basically any surface fabrics, carpets and cupboards. This leaves a fresh but non-intrusive citrus scent. We have many different roles we play in our day-to-day -day grind, from staying at work to going home to doing things in the house. Personally, a favorite hobby of mine or a pastime that I enjoy is rugby. This is a game that is a full body contact sport and it's enjoyed by many. I am somewhat of a messy person and don't you go judging me. Because sometimes I leave unclean clothes that can start smelling up my room especially if I can't find the dirty pair of socks that just seems to stink up my room. This product helps to remove unwanted scents in my room and improves the ambience of my room. Bad odors will be a thing of the past with our eco-friendly Odogon scent removal chemical. I know you've seen that Brian Bell has the best range of environmentally friendly chemicals here for you to clean your office or your home. We also have cleaning tools that go perfectly well with these environmentally friendly chemicals. Come on in check it out for yourself and get some to clean your office or your home. And always remember, great prices, great products, and great after-sales service. That's Brian Bell. Until the next time, goodbye and God bless. Serving the nation for over 50 years for all automotive, marine, power products, trucks, parts, service and accessories, Ella Motors has always been around and is still going stronger with its network of dealerships throughout the entire country. Here now is Ella Motors July's edition. The vehicle tire contact area with the road is no larger than an average shoe size. Yet, how much attention do you pay to the condition of your tires? When was the last time you performed an inspection on them? And how about your vehicle's batteries? Did you know that not only does it start your vehicle's engine, it also is used as an electrical source of power for ignition, electrical lighting, and other vehicle accessories. My name is John and I'm a Toyota Technical Trainer here at Ella Motors. I will be giving you tips on vehicle tire care and vehicle battery maintenance. Tire care tips. Tip 1. Replace your tires when the tire tread wear indicator is exposed. Tires contain antioxidizing chemicals that help to slow down the natural aging process of untreated rubber. However, tires do deteriorate with age, which increases the risk of tire failure. 
And there are many ways in which this can be identified. One of which is cracking on the sidewall of the tire caused by its flexing and distortion of tire tread. Tip two, replace all your tires every five years or after 10 years from the date of manufacturer. After five years or more in service, your tire should be thoroughly inspected. As a precaution, if the tires have not been replaced 10 years from the date of manufacturer, it is recommended that you replace them with new tires. Tip three, make sure to use the correct wheel nut and the correct tension. It's important that the correct wheel nut is used that matches the type of rim fitted to the vehicle. Check the condition of the chamber edge of the wheel nut and the length of the shoulder and a step wheel nut. The tension of the wheel nut is important and should be tightened correctly with a torque tube. Just to add to that, rotate tire position if any irregular wear is found on any of the tires after every 5,000 kilometers. Tip 4. Avoid fierce braking. Fierce braking takes away the life of your car tire and leads to early wear and tear. It's important to drive at a constant pace and avoid applying fierce brakes. Tip 5. New tires are your best defense against aquaplaning while driving. Aquaplaning occurs when the tire encounters more water than it can dissipate. New tires are the best weapons against this. A tread pattern that channels water out from between the tire and the road is most effective means of preventing aquaplaning. Tip 6. Always maintain the correct recommended tire air pressure. Tire air pressure should always be checked and corrected when they are cold. It is vital that the tire air pressure are maintained at levels recommended by the manufacturer to ensure maximum tire life, safety, and the best ride and handling characteristics. Tip 7. Do not mix and match tire types and sizes unless recommended by manufacturer. Most passenger tires today are radial tires. For best performance, we recommend the same size and type of tire to be used on all four-wheel positions unless the vehicle manufacturer specifies different sizes. Check the vehicle place card. If only two radials are mounted with two non-radials, the radials should be mounted on the rear. If tires of different types are mixed on a vehicle in any configuration, they should not be used for long periods and speed should be kept at a minimum. Mixing or matching of tires on four-wheel drive vehicle requires special precautions. Always check the vehicle manufacturer's manual for their recommendations. Tip 8. Wheel alignment should be done after every 5,000 kilometers or when an irregular wear on the tire is found. A wheel alignment is part of standard automotive maintenance and consists of adjusting angles of wheels so that they are set to the car manufacturer's specification. The purpose of this adjustment is maximum tire life and vehicle travel that is straight and true when driving along a straight and level road. Vehicle Battery Maintenance Tips In order to have a proper working vehicle, your battery needs to be in a good working order. Testing a battery is a simple procedure that can be done during your regular scheduled vehicle maintenance inspection. If your vehicle is getting hard and slower to start, it may not always mean that your battery is totally gone. Sometimes it just needs a recharge. These recommended charging procedures can help you keep your battery operating in full power. Observe the following guidelines when charging. Make sure the battery terminals are clean and free from corrosion. Do not attempt to charge a dried out battery. If needed, add distal or drinking water to just above the battery plates. Do not overfill. Refer to any written instructions provided by the battery and charger manufacturers. Identify the positive and negative terminals of the battery and attach the correct charger leads. When charging a battery connected to a vehicle, be sure that the vehicle's electrical system has protection against overvoltage, or be sure that the charger will not have high charging voltages that may damage the vehicle's electrical system. General vehicle battery maintenance tip. Check your battery every now and then to make sure its terminal connections are clean, smug and protected from any elements. Ensure that the battery is securely firmed in the battery carrier. A battery that is not secure could move 
and the terminals shot out on the body panels and start a fire or even explode. Testing the condition is performed by checking the battery voltage with a voltmeter. Conducting a load test is determined how the battery will perform while cranking the engine and then by checking the specified gravity for those batteries that are fully sealed. So there you have it. Those were my tire care and battery maintenance tips. Please remember, if you need our help, do not hesitate to get in touch with us or visit your nearest Ella Motors branch and let them know that I sent you. Always remember, Ella Motors is your first choice. Losing weight is good if your aim is to stay fit and healthy. But if you're losing more than you should, then there is a problem. We now join Dr. Ambi on Healthy Minds with more in detail. This is Healthy Mind with Dr. Ambi, proudly brought to you by Telecom PNG Limited. Welcome to Healthy Mind. Well, we were past few weeks we have been talking about uh, eating disorder. Well, we are continuing because we need to know what's the causes. So, in the past segments, we talked about anorexia and bulimia. These are two very important disorders. That means one black kind of sick. We missed up one time eating disorders. We talked about. Uh, what are they and what's the definition of that? And we, we plan to talk about the consequences in the last segment. Well, this segment, we have to talk about what causes this anorexia and bulimia. Well, there are few, uh, many people have many ideas, different ideologies, different culture. Think in below you may also plenty low, kind, kind, way low expressing why kids develop anorexia and bulimia. You have a penis or some anorexia, mainly you are starving, you are losing weight by starving, and the, on the bulimia, you induce vomiting to say, lose weight. End of the day, you are going to lose weight, but the problem is that kids who suffer like this, they can't remember, they have, they are all right with the weight, but they perceive, that means think, think, blong all, now uh, uh, worry, blong all, all or mind, blong all, thing or some em, fat blood through. Huh? So we'll find out what's the cause. Number one is the social pressure. When we talk about social pressure, you may have your similar culture where there is no thinness is not an issue, then it's fine. There is no problem about the society talking about that. But we also talk about their kids are right now exposed to many television magazines, kind kind movies and about the day comes the thinness is the beautiful. So they associate that and they try to groom or modify or uh, follow him or husati uh, oli thing him or some uh, you know look look good or some or role model him all this la kind or can m can trigger him all this la kind problem. Like example if you have a society where there is a ballet dancers, you need to be thin. So they also contribute towards being thin and being very slim. That can lead, being thinking like that, when you are not in control, it leads to anorexia and bulimia. It's not thinking, it's out of control in your thinking. Number two is the control. Well, that is the cost number control is dieting can be normal, okay. You can see that we need to weigh, lose weight to stay healthy, to get rid of lifestyle diseases. Yes, because you can't have a too fat also. But here we are talking about abnormal way of thinking. Your weight is normal, but the kids are thinking, I am, you know, fat. So that's the problem here. So it is good to feel, to have that there is a feeling that you want to diet, you want to stay, but do it with your clear mind. Because if you do, clear mind is not right there, you might misunderstand the whole thing and go into eating disorder. So can be in control of your life. That is one of the, if you are not in control, it can lead to uh, especially anorexia and bulimia. 
Number three is the puberty. You will see these fatty little babies or children when they're be becoming puberty, they already started anorexia. So when you're suffering from anorexia, and by bagarapim, all get out, or you know, uh, inside blow you, or similar sexual, uh, you know, endocrines and things like that. So it interferes with the growth, and you will see the patient uh, still looks very young or childish or this like kind because there's an interference, interfere with the uh, uh, growth hormones and sexual hormones and things. So even if they mature and become puberty, and when you're having anorexia, there is a deficiency. It doesn't the sexual organs don't uh, mature the way it should be. So we can see the puberty also contribute, and also you can see influences in the puberty, the anorexia and bulimia. Number four point is the family. We know eating is a good pasina. Huh? So also you me also boom one nam kai kai emi big plus something. So for you offering kai kai now all rejecting me and big plus uh, you know upset true now. You know nam have a muscle this la. So the lot of kids who are suffering anorexia and uh, you know they when they are upset in their mind they reject. That's one of the way to show the family they are not happy. So while doing that they can lead to anorexia and bulimia. Number five is the depression. Okay, you will see if the child has got mental health issues or depression or any other mental health issue also can trigger towards anorexia and bulimia. And some number six point is upsets. People have, the children have relationship issues, uh, violence and things like that in the house. But you look at more same, all get a beginning got this kind of issue also can be provoked towards developing anorexia. So how can we help them? Well, we was, it's important, you, me, law understanding, you know, some like I'm sick, you know, you all pick, Papa, Mama can see uh, they are uh, having normal weight, but the children are thinking they are still, uh, you know, fat. That thinking is not there. So when you see they're continuing to, if you see a children continuing to lose weight, even though that right weight they have achieved, but they are not thinking that they are, uh, getting down or losing weight, they are still thinking they are fat, you must consider that those kind of children need to be examined very early by psychiatrists. Well, how can we help again? I want to stop. We have to recognize. That's one of the way of recognize how your children are behaving. And most of the time, we need to, if you recognize early, we can treat them also early. Everything will be back to normal. And also you will feel that food and allowing them and you know you have to allow them to great uh, uh, tips or whatever you can do all about to line them all piccinini and tell them what is the right uh, you know amount to eat what is the basic uh, age to height now one in basic metabolic you know the I index uh, how now all this stuff now you must look look low suppose you worry because one of the way to help you need to check if the child is really continuing to lose weight you need to take them to the doctor and see whether other sickness are there to make sure that they are coming out of that sickness because their physical illness also can trigger anorexia or feeling or losing weight continuously. And if the problem is if it long term, if you are not detecting it early, either anorexia can lead to life threatening because the complications are immense. So it can cause even death. So you need to be very sooner the, you recognize and you need to what we have to do once you recognize you have an issue take them to the hospital talk about it what do the kids think what are you thinking because food and you feel what quality what they are doing what quantity they are eating are they vomiting are they not eating it's important for the parents to at this era this society you need to keep an eye on them and it's important for you to refer to a right doctor mainly a psychiatrist because when you go to the psychiatrist the psychiatrist is going to actually assess the patient thoroughly and find out why why the patient or person is thinking that way because it's important that complications are uh, going to come in way so the psychiatrist will get to know and then how they are going to manage they are going to treat if there's underlying mental health issues they will give them medications and on the other hand 
talking therapies and also you will see that uh, also counseling and treating the complications because complications can lead to death. So uh, the doctors will ensure take good a uh, good blood assessment now good blood pining all by making one way all can come up na uh, help him all na counseling all and give him all right medicine and treat the complications they can stay healthy well we us we are come to the end of uh, uh, to find out what is anorexia what is uh, bulimia and we are also found out what the actually the consequences when you have this kind of uh, eating disorders we also find out that what causes all this kind of uh, eating disorders emi important through lo you me uh, find out that all these things good parenting is in uh, very very important well viewers and we have learned a lot today and this will contribute to keep your kids in the right direction and a healthy life and a healthy long life and a, and a quality of life in their life well viewers what can i say put papa god first always think all these things can exist in life and learn and have knowledge do not be afraid because god is there to guide you and give wisdom until next time what will i say take care and god bless you all. bye bye now Healthy Mind was proudly brought to you by Telecom PNG Limited. For all your current BSP updates, here now is Tina Pomat with BSP July's edition. Good evening and welcome to another BSP program. We started this month with the settlement or acquisition of Westpac Banking Corporation in Vanuatu on the 1st of July. This follows the purchase of Westpac operations in Cook Islands, Tonga and Samoa in July 2015 and Solomon Islands at the end of October 2015. This acquisition is aligned to BSP's specific based expansion strategy, which has been maintained since 2006. BSP CEO Robin Fleming thanked all BSP and Westpac staff involved with the successful completion of the transition and welcomed staff and customers to BSP. Moving on to our sponsorship events, we presented 30,000 Kina as gold sponsor towards Bank of Papua New Guinea's Financial Inclusion Expo, which was held in Mount Hagen on July 15th to the 16th. The Financial Expo aimed to provide an environment for people to have access to financial services. to create awareness on new development in the finance and banking sector including innovative financial services and delivery channels the bank support towards this event is in line with our programs aimed at reaching more people with financial literacy training banking education and financial services over in kokopo bsp continued its gold sponsor of 10000 kina towards the 22nd Warwagira and Mask Festival held from the 14th to the 16th July. The festival showcased traditional dancing from both East and West New Britain provinces as well as the neighboring island and mainland provinces. BSP recognizes the need and importance of promoting and showcasing our culture for our country's economic empowerment. Being a homegrown bank, it is our drive to see that PNG's tourism and culture is being promoted with positive messages to other countries. Moving on to BSP's community projects, this year's theme is based on provision of clean water and renewable energy. Earlier this month, the operations business unit installed two water tanks, eight drinking taps, and four rubbish drums to Hagara Primary School. Our Gardens Commercial Center installed two water tanks to Marineville Secondary School. The students were excited to have received these tanks as it will help provide water for their swimming classes as well as for their consumption and other activities. BSP's community project initiative is an important part of the bank's corporate social responsibility which helps the communities around us in which we operate in. We hope to deliver lasting changes. 
This brings us to the end of our program for tonight. Join us next month for more BSB updates. Until then, good night. Spending too much money on simple things that are considered useful at some point can be a hassle sometimes. Little things like pillowcases, placemats, cloth holders, hair ribbons and too many to name. Sewing, in my opinion, is a lifesaver. I personally love sewing and honestly I enjoy sewing with my mom. She's amazing. I sew my own handbags, hair ribbons and other simple things. Well, on Home Habits, I will show you something I learned from my mom. Have a look. Hi everyone and welcome to Home Habits once again. I'm here with more sewing. I'm gonna teach you how to make a toilet paper holder. So right before me, I have my fabrics. I have um, the body of my toilet paper holder here. I have the holder, which I will teach you how to attach to the body. I have the frills and of course the handles. So let's begin. Here are the measurements I have for the toilet paper holder. The body is 9 by 30 inches. The frills is 78 inches. Your frills will only depend on how you do your pleats. The handles are 6 inches each and 3 inches when folded. Step 1. Firstly, place your fabric on a flat surface right side up. What you do is insert the fabric in which you've chosen for the frills and create your pleats. Here's how you do your pleats. Fold back 2 or 3 inches preferably and place the other piece of the body on top of the other two pieces and use your pins to pin together. The pleating and the pinning process for the first time can take you at least 5 to 6 minutes or even 10 to get it all done. Believe me when I say I actually stumbled quite a good number of times to get this process done. Step 2. Sew all the way around after the pleating and pinning process. Leave an opening at the other shorter edge so that you can pull the whole body right side out. Step 3. Pull the whole body right side out. You can see that the pleats have made cute frills. Put it aside and work on the handles. Step 4. Fold in from left and right into the center and fold again and sew a straight stitch. You can either sew the ribbons first and then carry on with the body and frills. I would have done that too, but I found it a lot more easier working on the body and the frills first and then the ribbons because the handles can be done in no time. Step 5. So now that the handles are ready, fold them in half each so that they are 3 inches when folded and 6 inches long. Place at least 2 inches into the opening and sew. Always remember to use your pins. Pins are very important to use when you're sewing. It keeps the fabric pieces together in place and makes it easier for you to sew accurately. Remove pins as you sew along. Now it's time to work on the holder. With this piece of fabric, you want to fold in from left and right and then fold again to sew. Make sure to use a straight stitch and sew all the way down and around. Once you're done with the holder, this is how the holder is going to look like. Step 7. Pin the holder against the body and gather a few inches to sew across. Do this continuously until the holder is completely pinned onto the body. Step 8. And finally, sew across the pinned section. And there you go. This is how your finished product is going to look like. And there you have it. That was the toilet paper holder. Don't forget to join me next time for more DIYs on home habits. Goodbye. We have come to the end of our show. If you have any comments or questions, or if you would like us to do a segment on a topic of interest to you, please feel free to get in touch with us on the email address now showing on your screen. You can also give us a call on 325-7322 and ask to speak to the House at Home team. You can also get in touch with us 
or catch up on any of our shows you have missed through our House and Home Facebook page or you could also visit MTV online. Thank you for joining us here on House and Home. It's goodbye for now. We care about improving lifestyles. It's all about the better man for your life.